Um, well, I, 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 I just call myself a Chicana writer. Well, I mean, I technically, it technically means um, Mexican-American, that you're a Mexican herencia, and, but born in the United States. And so um, that's what, I mean, people who identify as Chicano or Chicana, that's who they are, but it's a political term. So it's a, it's a way of sort of self-identifying from the time it kind of or originated in the, the, the movimiento of the 1960s. And so I was really coming of age during that time. And so it really was a movement of uh, Mexican-Americans claiming sort of their um, indigenous uh, uh, origins here in the Americas, you know, as opposed to being like another, uh, like Italian-American or something else American, as opposed to an indigenous population, I mean, uh, as opposed to an immigrant population, that we were actually, you know, native to the Americas and that we had a right to be here and that the, the gringos came after us. You know, so it was a very politicized term, and it's something that I've continued to use as as I, um, you know, continue to evolve as a writer and as an activist and such. And it's it's always sort of it's framed my feminism, it's framed my um, my queer identity, all of it. It's all sort of within this framework of being a Chicano. My father had very little family, so we really were. He was sort of adopted by our family, by by the Mexicano family, and so. Um, Culturally speaking, that was you know I really grew up in a Mexican American home, but but that is to say as Mexicanos in the United States, and mm -hmm. so that was sort of my mother was born in 1914, and my grandmother was born in 1888. So they so and my grandmother lived you know always like next door and close to us and all that. So I was raised pretty much in a cultura that was you know fairly. Uh, original here in the United States, and you know that's the antecedents. You know, go fairly far back. And uh, my my mother's Chicana; she was born in the United States, um, but you know, Spanish speaking first, and then uh, my grandmother didn't speak English, and so that was the world I grew up in. She came of a family of nine, originally eleven, but nine who lived, and there was two uh, two tios, and then and one then one passed, and then. The rest were tias, you know, like had like six out of five. I guess she had five sisters and herself. So they were all, um, they were all in the mix, you know. So, you know, when I say, and my mom was just, you know, muy, you know, muy fuerte, you know, you know, me doy una, no, no, un ejemplo bien importante para mí. The the origins of my writing, in many ways, kind of came uh, because I was, you know, we're, we're, I'm a first, like many of us, a first generation. Educated, right? So, so to a large degree, as I came to sort of understand myself and I went to school, you're encouraged just to sort of identify with the mainstream of the United States, and you know, not to really look very much at cultura. And um, but as uh, curiously, when I, you know, as I sort of kind of became more conscious, and as I said, I was coming of age during these times of great political movement, right? So there was the Chicano movement, the Black Power movement, the Civil Rights movement and also um, the, the feminist movement, gay and lesbian movement. And since I had a relationship to all those identities in many ways, it was a really, uh, and it was a powerful time of, of change, social change. And I saw myself as part of that. And so, um, so the writing immediately kind of took me home. It kind of took me back to my origins where I didn't necessarily, you know, I was an English major and study all the, the great white masters, you know. And it, it didn't have the resonance for me. And, I, and when I wanted to be, when I began writing, I realized that I could either kind of try to copy them and I'd be sort of a cheap imitation of them, you know, or I could try to find an original voice and that voice took me home.